Hello and welcome back. Once again, we are continuing on our journey of exploration, our investigation into cellular energetics. In other words, we're trying to answer the question of where does the energy come from that you use to move your muscles, to walk down the street, to think your thoughts, to build new molecules? Where does all the energy come from? Now, all this stuff you're doing, we've termed cellular activities, and we've said that most of these cellular activities are actually powered by an exergonic reaction, which is the breakdown of ATP into ADP and phosphate. Now we were forced to consider the question of how is it that ATP acquires this energy in the first place? And we found that the answer there uh, was that there's an enzyme called ATP synthase in the inner mitochondrial membrane, that ATP synthase is powered by flow of protons, from high concentration in the intermembrane space of the mitochondrion to low concentration in the mitochondrial matrix. We then asked, where does the energy come from to make the proton gradient? And we found that the proton gradient gets formed uh, by the electron transport chain, and the energy for that is provided by the reaction of these electron carriers NADH and FADH2 uh, the, the transfer of electrons from these electron carriers to oxygen. Uh, and then uh, we were forced to confront a, a next question, which is where do NADH and FADH2 get their energy from? Uh, and if we need to continuously supply NADH and FADH2 to the electron transport chain, where does it come from? Uh, furthermore, how does it how do we regenerate it? We considered a question before of how do we recharge ATP? We've, we're faced with a very similar problem now. How do we recharge or regenerate NADH and FADH2 from NAD plus and FAD? So that's the question for today. Where does this NADH and FADH2 come from? How do we make it? Where, where, where does the energy come from? All right, so let's take a look at that now. And we'll start by taking another look at that moving animation that we've spent a lot of time with already. Okay, here we are, we're back again, looking at our favorite animation. You can see the ATP synthase working away, making ATP over here. We've got our electron transport chain, and here comes FADH2 dropping off electrons to power proton pumps. Uh, NADH is gonna show up any second to come along and power uh, another proton pump by dropping off electrons as well. And you'll see oxygen, the final electron acceptor over here as well. So this is all old stuff that we've done already. What we really want to know right now is where does this NADH come from? This NADH, where does it come from? And where does that FADH2 come from? So before we go any further, I think actually that now is a really good time to take a look around uh, and, and orient ourselves to where all of this stuff is happening. So I've already said this is the intermembrane space, this is the mitochondrial matrix, this is the inner mitochondrial membrane, uh, but it might be worth zooming back out and, and taking a look there. So let's do that now. All right, so here we have a cartoon diagram of a mitochondrion, and it's been sort of sliced and diced so you can see inside. Here in brown on the outside, this is the outer mitochondrial membrane. Here this sort of pinkish wrinkly membrane, that's representing the inner membrane, and you can see it folding all along here. This is the membrane which the electron transport chain proteins are embedded in. This is also the membrane where the ATP synthase is embedded in. Uh, inside the volume of the inner membrane, that's the mitochondrial matrix. Uh, and outside the inner membrane, between the two membranes, that's the intermembrane space. So let's go back for a moment to our moving diagram. And so you can see here, this is the matrix down here, this is the intermembrane space up here. The NADH seems to be coming from the matrix. And the FADH2 also seems to be coming from the matrix. And uh, that's no mistake, this animation is doing a good job. Uh, it turns out that FADH2 and NADH are both produced, mostly, in the mitochondrial matrix. Now there are some other places where these are made, but we're gonna, we'll, we'll get to those later. The majority of the NADH and the FADH2 is produced in the mitochondrial matrix itself. Um, and so, so where does it come from? How does that work? And where does the energy come from? So it turns out that the mitochondrial matrix is packed with enzymes and their substrates. And these enzymes, you know, as enzymes do, each catalyzes a different chemical reaction with a different substrate. And some of the products of these reactions are NADH and FADH2. Now, this is a, a little more 
complicated, maybe, than I'm making it sound, uh, because what we've really got here is a whole system of enzymes that work together to produce NADH and FADH2 to power the electron transport chain. Uh, all of these enzymes work together, in fact, in a sort of cycle, which is variously called the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, and also the tricarboxylic acid cycle. Uh, I'm going to be calling it the citric acid cycle. You can call it whatever you want. If you use any of those three names, anybody's going to know what you're talking about. All right, so let's dive into the mitochondrial matrix right now and take a look at these enzymes and the reactions that they're uh, catalyzing. Okay, don't be afraid. It's not as bad as it seems. So let me orient you to this diagram here. Uh, I promise it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. So the arrows all represent chemical reactions. So uh, this molecule here labeled oxaloacetate is undergoing a reaction to form this molecule called citrate. Okay, so far so good. Uh, these boxes that are coming off of these little squares, those represent the simple structural diagram representations of these molecules. So this box right here represents oxaloacetate, this box right here represents citrate, this box right here represents uh, acetyl-coenzyme A, or we'll just call it acetyl-CoA, um, this box here represents isocitrate, and so on. The small text, which is near each of the arrows, actually this is something you've seen before. This is how we indicate the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction. So when we want to react oxaloacetate with acetyl-CoA to form citrate, the enzyme which assists is citrate synthase. When we want to go from citrate to isocitrate, we use this enzyme right here, and so forth. So each of these enzymes catalyzes a different step of this process. Uh, you may also notice that inside these little boxes, there are uh, the letter C and then a number. And the letter C represents carbon, and the number represents how many carbons are in the uh, corresponding molecule. So oxaloacetate has four carbons. You can see them one, two, three, four. Acetyl-CoA has two carbons, one, two. Um, citrate has six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Um, Biochemists find it helpful to keep track of the carbons. Perhaps you would like to do so as well. In any case, that's what those little boxes make. Okay, so this is a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions where one substrate is being modified sequentially, and during that process, during that chain of chemical reactions, we get some really useful products. So if we zoom in over here, let's take a little closer look right over here. When isocitrate, and by the way, you, you don't need to know the specific names of these. Uh, when this molecule right here gets uh, turned into this molecule right here, we get some interesting products. In particular, we're very interested to find that one of the byproducts of this reaction is NADH. And that's the very same NADH that's going to mosey on over to the electron transport chain, drop off some electrons, and power that proton pumping, which is so essential to the energy production of your body. Uh, here's another NADH being formed down here. Uh, here's a molecule called GTP. Seems kind of familiar. Maybe it sounds like ATP. Very similar type of molecule. Here's our old friend FADH2 being produced from FAD, and uh, one more molecule of NADH from NAD+. So we can zoom on uh, back out here and take a look at the big picture once more. Again, all we're really seeing here, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of detail here, of course, and, and we could, you could spend a lot of time studying this in the different steps and so forth, but the intention of this video series is to give you a big picture overview of what's happening. And the big picture overview of what's happening here, as far as we're concerned, is that we have a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions which produce NADH and FADH2 to supply the electron transport chain. There you go. The point, so to speak, of the citric acid cycle, as far as we're concerned right now, is to produce NADH and FADH2 for the electron transport chain. That's it. That's all you really need to know in establishing this big picture view for now. We can add the detail later. So what's the source of this energy? What's the, if we're, if we're getting energy out, what's the input? The input, as indicated here, is this molecule 
called acetyl-CoA. And we're going to be looking in more detail at the generation of this substance later, because <laughs> if you've noticed the pattern, uh, we keep saying, ah, here's the explanation, but then how does that thing work? So <laughs> here's the explanation. Acetyl-CoA is the input into this system, uh, but we're going to have to figure out where this energetic molecule comes from in order to uh, ultimately answer the question of where do you get the energy to move your arms and think your thoughts and dream your dreams? So acetyl-CoA comes into the system here and uh, is, is modified through a series of enzyme-catalyzed steps, and eventually uh, you get out the other end, NADH and FADH2. While we're here, it's also worth noting that this process produces carbon dioxide. Here's a carbon dioxide molecule right here. Here's another carbon dioxide molecule right here. You're probably aware that when you exhale, you part of the reason you need to breathe is to exhale carbon dioxide from your bloodstream back into the air. Where does that carbon dioxide come from? It comes from right here. This is the carbon dioxide that you're breathing out. Pretty cool. So that's, that's basically it for this one. The citric acid cycle, in terms of our brief introduction to it, is just a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions that produce NADH and FADH2 to power the electron transport chain's proton pumps so that ATP synthase can spin and ATP can be made and you can go frolic in the woods or dance to a pleasant simple tune or whatever it is you enjoy doing. So, shall we summarize? Yes, I agree. We should summarize. Let's go back to the summary and do some summarizing. Okay, here, we're back. So we... No. Okay, we're back. Is this looking familiar yet? You've got all these cellular activities you want to power. You power them on a chemical level by breaking down ATP. ATP needs to be recharged. Where is it recharged? It's recharged at ATP synthase in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Where does the energy come from for that? It comes from the flow of protons down their concentration gradient through the ATP synthase. It spins around. It makes the ATP. Sounds familiar, right? Okay, good. So where does the proton gradient get its energy from? It comes from the reaction of NADH and FADH2 with oxygen, that electron transfer through a series of intermediate enzymes all the way to oxygen, which results in the pumping of protons into the intermembrane space. But then where does the NADH and the FADH2 come from? I'm so glad you asked. The NADH and the FADH2 come from, here it comes, Ta -da -da -da. the citric acid cycle, which is, once more, just a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions with an input of acetyl-CoA to form a number of products, but in particular, what we're interested in is NADH, FADH2. There you have it. Citric acid cycle provides high-energy electron carriers to power the electron transport chain. Next time, where does the acetyl-CoA come from? We'll see you then. Bye for now.